Okay, so here's the scene I've got, unfortunately. I made the mistake of stepping one foot past a police officer um, when they were beginning to start the court and they hadn't formed yet. But as they were beginning to form it, I just took a step past her to turn around and reform, get a better view. And then she just blocked me and said uh, that I couldn't go back. So I've essentially been awake for 24 hours to fulfill a role as a welfare officer in there and live streamer. And now I'm excluded. I can't get anywhere close to it. So uh, you'll have to look up Kieran Dunn, Frank Roberts. And there were two more I mentioned in my last live stream. I can't remember the names um, who are also live streaming. So find other live streamers from inside. And unfortunately, I'm stuck in this external position until I can clarify whether I get to go back in and do the welfare work or not. It's been a heck of a long hours to be excluded for no reason. I rather lost my temper in the last video, sorry, but that was just an affront, you know, when you're a totally law-abiding citizen who for six months has stood here and opposed this and made no criminal actions ever in your life, and then to be ordered about, told where you can stand, told where you can't stand, what you can do, and you can't fulfill something that you've been to two, you know, you've been to planning meetings and things to sort out. It's just, it's so difficult to accept that because I don't consider that these police have very much authority anymore because essentially they're facilitating a frack site, which to me is a crime, and they're stopping peaceful protest. And that to me is the wrong way around for the law. So my respect for what they tell me to do is nil. Because as far as I'm concerned, they should be out there telling Francis Egan what to do or the site staff what to do, not me. So, for those who don't know, there are 13 people locked on, five sets of two, three individuals with pipes and barrels. The bitumen content's high, so it's going to take a long, long time to cut out. Um, they're well formed barrels. I don't think much work will get done on the site today. Also understand there's someone surfing the trucks down at PR Marriott in Chesterfield, which means trucks trying to leave and make the destination here aren't going to get very far um, because they've all come to a halt. We know there's um, equipment stored in the area, but again, they can't get that through today because we're blocking it with 13 lock-ons. See you, sweetheart. Enjoy yourselves. See you later, sweetheart. I'll do one out, one in. He's gone, I should just go in and take his place. <laughs> the bloody glasses are in there now. Where? Yes! Thank you. They're usually on my face and I don't know that they're <laughs> Damn. If I hadn't got them, I might have been able to convince you to let me go back in and get them. I'm sure you'd have given in on that one. Hey Sarah, nice to see you on here. <laughs> so now it's just a waiting game. The protester removal team are here and I think there must only be one team because we recognise all of those faces from the last lock-ons. My role was as the welfare officer for Councillor Gina Dowling um, who's doing her first lock-on and just a shared, we've been friends in the Green Party for a long time and uh, I wanted to stay and support her because it's her first lock on. I mean, she's a brave woman, but we have been together all the evening. We all started our lock on at uh, quarter to three this morning. We've had several meetings to plan it. And it feels awful not being there to support. I know there's other people who can, but it was just a, there was an affinity group sort of thing. Yeah, we know. Okay. Are you alright? We can do a call. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
do a sweep all the way along. They want to put a well fed off. I am a welfare officer. I suppose that helps. So the police are going to move us all on. Anybody in there who's not either locked on or a welfare officer is going to be moved out, uh, which is where we knew our roles would be in there as the welfare officers. Last time there was a lock-on, they only allowed one welfare officer, but then there was only four people in the lock-on. This time there's 13. Two are in wheelchairs, a few have uh, medical health issues, and uh, they're all local people, 11 of whom have never done an action in their lives. So welfare officers are more important on this lock-on possibly than usual uh, because of that, because, you know, this is a, an unusual situation for residents to find themselves in. And my vision is going to be blocked now because they're filling them in. So I'll try the other side. No, seething. I feel so useless on the outside. I did a radio interview earlier for the local radio station. And she said, I'll, I'll just tell you what um, Lancashire like Shale told us in their interview. And uh, she said, um, they've confirmed that every person who protests each day there is a professional paid protester. What's your response? I'm like, Jesus, the 13 people locked on, 11 of them have never done anything in their lives like this, three are counsellors, two are in wheelchairs, they each have a filed address. And, like, oh, just, how do you fight, how do you argue an out and out liar? And he said, what would you say to them? I said, they're out and out liars. He said, I don't think you can say that. I said, well, I'm not going to say they're misleading or they're incorrect because they're actually deliberately lying. So, you know, it's like that guy that got out of his car the other day. Do you see that on the live stream? A guy pulled up in an Audi and he hated us. And he got out of his car and he literally just, just ran over just to say um, how awful we were. And I was like, why do you think that? You know, he said, well, you're just paid by a higher authority. I haven't got any money. Where the hell's the wage slip? 20 quid a week I live on. I don't even draw friggin' benefits. Do you know, and I worked out why they do that, though. Why they can think that, Lancashire for Shale. Because I think if you're the mentality that thinks you, know, you only do something for money, the fact that they see us giving up six months of our lives at the side of a road and that, like, the last 24 hours we've all been awake, just working this, that they can't understand how any human could do that without some win without realising it's that obligation, it's the duty, it's the love of our children. They, they don't get that mentality. They, so they think it can only be money. What does Julie get? I'd love to tell you what they're chanting. It's... Oh, Julie gets her fags. Yes. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so Julie's cigarettes were on the outside, and due to mass demonstration, her fags did indeed come across. I've been awake for 24 hours for nothing. All the planning meetings where my role is with Gina, and I'm live streaming and welfare for her, and by one step out of the direction. But it's just, you know, you guys should... You would think that trying to keep the peace 
would mean let's not create antagonistic situations that make no difference. My being this side or that side makes no difference. I've watched people leave. So if you had a one in one out policy, I'd have been in there because at least five have left. It just seems an antagonistic thing to do that's entirely unnecessary. And it's not like I'm an unknown entity where you think, oh my God, she's bound to lock onto something or rough someone up. You know, I've been here six months, you guys have watched. Hmm. Well, I've never seen you rough anyone up, Tina. Not yet. Okay. I'm close to it today. Okay. I wouldn't push too hard. <laughs> I would never push you, Tina. Police officer just said to me, you're right, Tina? I'm like, no. I'm thinking normally I say yes it's fine and we just move on there's no need for any more antagonism in my life I just try to keep the peace with everybody because this is shit enough you know and my war's with them not with you I think we got people caught through yeah people are leaving see they're going I could easily pretend I'm her so we slip back through not have wasted 24 hours of my life being awake what we've uh, what we've said to your legal observer colleague here is that um, you've basically got choices: four welfares, no legal, or three welfares, one legal. How do you work out that ratio? Because I know the other day when we had four uh, lock-ons, it was uh, one welfare, yeah, wasn't it? We've got thirteen today. I don't make that. Decision, yeah, but I'm trying to work out the ratio because if you had one uh, for four, 13, so yeah, four, eight, twelve. So yeah, you're, you're probably doing one for three or four people. Yeah, yeah now, I get it. I don't know. Um, I don't know what, whether there's any specific formula out there for working this out, but it, I think it's just a decision made on the day. <laughs> oh, like that. yeah, it's, uh, Sorry. Uh, there's a few of them about. Yeah. See you later. Bye, sweetheart. Sure. Yeah, I reckon they must be doing a ratio of about one to every three or four people. Then, if that's yeah. the numbers. Yeah. Mind you, I think it's slightly different today because two are in wheelchairs and they have their own carers. So those carers have to stay with them because they have their own medical needs and they, they know them. So that would be one each for them. And then if you've got 11 left over, then I think you should still have another three. So that would be, in my reckoning, that would be at least five. So, but hey, there's no rhyme or reason to what you guys do sometimes. I'm preaching to the converted guys. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, I knew. I mapped it out. I knew the whole day. I knew I was going to get wet at one point. I was going to freeze overnight. And then after 10 o'clock, I was going to get quite warm. Yeah. So I kind of dressed in a million layers to plan these, for that. These people know what they're doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they plan things. Yeah. I plan the weather all the time. One of them is the main planet is weather. And you know what? We've decided as well that there's no such thing as bad weather because if it's sunny, it's good for a protest. If it's bucketing down, it's great for trashing the site. It's already so bogged down. Yeah, and not from up, I grew up, uh, not from rain coming down, it's from the water coming up. So that all the vehicles that are leaving are leaving full of liquid and arriving empty. Right. So um, the EA had to admit it the other day, the environmental agency, the only thing they haven't admitted is actually what the water source is that they've hit. So they've either hit um, some sort of pipe work, which we, we don't think it is, we think they've hit an underground water source. And that's dangerous because they've got um, drilling muds and drilling muds are toxic. And there's drilling muds on site. So if there's an access point to get into, um, you know, the, into the aquifer or into any water supplies, then it's exceptionally dangerous already. It's already dangerous for the cows because we didn't realise they were drink, mixing the drilling muds on site and they shouldn't be doing that. They should go away to proper waste, but they're not. But we discovered how Quadrilla works. It works exactly the same way I did as a teenager, okay. which is you can either ask permission and risk getting a no, yeah. or you just go do the thing and say sorry afterwards. I always opted for the second one. So you go do the bad thing, take the chance, and if you get caught out later, you say sorry. Okay, that's right. So and, and because the fines are the costs to say, well, you did a bad thing, you shouldn't have done this, and they pay the fine, but it's such a small fraction of, you know, big cor corporations, you know, money. So, yeah. That's how they work with regulations. Actually, how they work with regulations is even more interesting because we phoned the environmental agency in the early days, back in 2011, and said, will you be sending anyone down to check these sites? They went, oh, no, we don't have staff for that. But like, well, how will the regulations be enforced? They were like, well, they tick the boxes and they send us paperwork each week and we confirm they've ticked the boxes. Okay. So it's self-marking your homework. Then we said, it's oh no, but there's an independent well examiner and he has to say they can tick that box and he takes responsibility. And then you ask, who pays the independent well examiner then? Oh, Quadrilla. 
Oh, okay. That makes him really independent when his wage depends on it, yeah. And that, that's that's and then you get to the point where you're like, this can't be true. This cannot be the real world. It's got to be conspiracy or stupidity. But it's not. Every bit's been confirmed. I had to go and give evidence in the House of Lords. So I took a stack of all this information. And I went and I gave my evidence. And there was nothing they could refute. Everything I said was, you know, pretty well there. But at least it all got documented. Didn't do anything about it, but it got documented. Now, I must, uh, must say, you certainly know it in yeah, six years. Yeah. My granddaughter's grown up and I missed all that. You know, you're standing here defending her future, but she's gone from there to here. And now she's hitting those years. Yes, yeah, she is actually. <laughs> and she's a long leggy thing, and in our family of under five foot women, it's a miracle. Yeah. yeah. I think she's destined to be a six footer actually. Her grandma on the other side is like really, really super tall. Tall and skinny, which is nice because we're all short and round on our side, so. That's how it's going to be. They're brilliant. Yeah, they, we build a tower on every site we've ever had. I don't know why. It's, it's a. I think it seems to be the male thing. Oh, right, that, you know, yeah. pallets turn up. Okay, back in a second. Oh. I'm talking to my sister right here. Oh, but I'm on live stream, so is this a bad idea? Yeah. I'm gonna face. I'm gonna pause this live stream and come back because my sister wants to say something.